Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Monday morning. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. Tanya's here, good morning. Adrian, I see you, good morning. On the Metro this morning, all right. Ethel in Memphis, Boston. Good morning, good morning. Raleigh, North Carolina, good morning. Connecticut, Washington State, West Coast. Sunny Glenwood, okay. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Paris, Tennessee, good morning. Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, you guys know Cornerstone Church in Toledo? Michael Pitts. Northwest Indiana, good morning. Louisiana. Houston, Texas, good morning. Local Chicago Heights. Monica, Mississippi, good morning. Take the flag down. We got the coffee going this morning. Caffeine going. Got the juicer going. Got some breakfast, some oatmeal going. Come on. High energy. Let's go. Hazel Crest. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Right. Egg and cheese sandwich with a with a hot cup. All right. It's motivational Monday, huh? Hope we can motivate you. <laughs> Homewood. Boiled eggs, grits, OJ. Hmm. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Good morning. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for inviting people to come on. Appreciate it. Y'all crack me up. You get on here and you start talking to each other. Well, good morning, everybody. It is Monday, the start of another week. God bless you. Uh, we're into it this morning. Uh, had a had a good weekend at, in my life, in my ministry at Cornerstone. Had a good time. I hope you did as well. Uh, this past Saturday, <coughs> Saturday I was uh, with a group of pastors and leaders up uh, in Franklin Park, Illinois. It's up by O'Hare Airport. And uh, I was teaching a leadership development seminar there with those leaders. So that was good. Great time. It's always good to be with leaders and to be able to teach leaders, train, develop leaders. I like that. I like that kind of thing. I thrive in that kind of environment, so I love it. Uh, then yesterday morning at Cornerstone, we had a wonderful time. Uh, the power of the Holy Spirit was mighty. Just, just, a, just another blowout time. It was tremendous yesterday at Cornerstone. And then last night, we had our flow gathering, which is the establishing a platform for the release of the creative arts. And that was happening last night at the Spa Theater in Park Forest, Illinois. Had a number of different uh, people that presented their gifts last night. It was really good. And uh, I thought one of the most impacting segments of uh, the program last night was Tanya Townsend interviewing, first of all, uh, Natasha Vinson, who is a young writer and uh, director. She has a play that's coming out this coming weekend. It will be happening on Saturday, the 29th of April. And uh, she interviewed Natasha about some of the struggles she's gone through in getting to the place where she is now in releasing her creative ability. And then she also interviewed Craig Jackson, who is a vocalist, a psalmist, a singer. 
and uh, she interviewed Craig about some of the challenges that he has gone through, uh, mostly concerning fear and concerning finances in getting his music ministry moving and off the ground and, and doing a recording. And so Craig has uh, an event coming up this Friday where he will be presenting a live concert in uh, Hazelcrest, Illinois. It's going to be a great time. If you go to my Facebook page, you can get all the details for both of those. Craig Jackson's concert on Friday and Natasha Vincent's play, Reckless, on Saturday. So um, that, that was really, really good. I thought it was very encouraging to people that were there last night. And at the end of Flow last night, we uh, gave an invitation for people that wanted to see their dreams resurrected from the dead, wanted to see their dreams come alive again. And, and uh, a number of people responded. We got to pray for a lot of people. We got to prophesy over several people, release the word of the Lord over their lives. Uh, most of them young people, like millennial age people. It was just a, a, a tremendous time last night. So we appreciate that. I'm grateful for what God did last night. Hallelujah. I hope uh, yesterday was a good day for you wherever you were yesterday as well. Really, really good. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a few minutes this morning about the increase of our faith, and I'm coming out of Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, you remember Luke chapter 11, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him to teach them to pray. Teach us to pray. Here in Luke chapter 17, they come with another response, uh, another question, I should say, a request. And here they're saying, Lord, we need you to increase our faith. We need you to increase our faith. Now, the reason they were asking to learn how to pray in Luke chapter 11 was because of all the ministry they had just come through in Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 10, where they found out that devils were subject to them. They found out that the sick were being healed through the faith and the power of God operating through their lives. And so they knew that they needed to learn how to pray in order to maintain and increase the power of God that was operating through them. They just understood that. We need to know how to pray. In Luke chapter 17, they come and they say, increase our faith. Jesus, we need you to increase our faith. Now, the reason they're asking for the increase of faith in Luke chapter 17 and verse 5 is because the first four verses of Luke 17, Jesus is dealing with their uh, ability to handle offenses and to deal with unforgiveness. And so as Jesus talks to them about the offenses that they're going to face and the occasions, the possibilities for holding unforgiveness against people, as he's, as he's talking to them about that, they suddenly realize, man, if we're, if we're going to deal with this thing about offenses and unforgiveness, we really need more faith. We've got to have faith on the increase in our lives. And, and so you see the disciples coming to Jesus, asking him to increase their faith. Now, the response that Jesus gives is rather interesting. He doesn't, he doesn't just automatically increase their faith, like, like snap the fingers, bam, it's a miracle, your faith is increased. But instead, he says, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root and be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. That's a powerful thing, isn't it? Then he says, and which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, he's still in the context of faith now, which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. And he will not rather say, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird myself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward then you shall eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, you, when you have done all those things which are commanded you, you are to say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done only that which was our duty to do. So in this section of scripture, Jesus is dealing with the increase of faith, but he's, he's telling the disciples how to increase their faith. He's not just going to do a miraculous work in their lives and just magically increase their faith. But he's teaching them the way you increase your faith is to use the faith that you already have. Use the faith that you already have. 
Now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you already have an element of faith working in your life. Romans chapter 12 says that uh, the Lord has given to each one of us a measure of faith, the measure of faith. So we all start out on equal footing. We have the measure of faith, but then it's up to us to cause it to increase, to cause it to grow. We can't be just depending on Jesus to increase our faith. Oh, Lord, increase my faith. Oh, God, make my faith better. Make my faith stronger. Increase my faith. Give me more faith. No, the way to increase your faith is to use the faith that you already have. It's kind of like working out, kind of like lifting weights. God put some muscles in your body. You already have the muscle tissue. It's already there. The way you increase the muscle is by exercising it doing something with it. And it's the same way you increase your faith. You take the faith you already have, the measure of faith, and you exercise it. You put it to work. You put it to use. Now, Jesus said, even if it's as small as a grain of a mustard seed, the mustard seed was one of the smallest seeds of that time. Tiny, small seed. Jesus said, if your faith is like that, if you will use it, it will begin to grow. It will increase. So take that mustard seed faith, that small amount of faith, and use it, exercise it, put it to work, and watch and see that faith grow. Watch and see it grow. So he tells them to put it to work by speaking the things and telling the things, commanding the things to move. He said, you're going to speak to this sycamine tree and you're going to cast it into the sea. Exercise your faith, exercise authority, release the power of God through the authority of your spoken word. You exercise your faith by speaking words. You believe something in your heart, then you speak it with your mouth. You you declare it with your mouth. Now, the process of faith that is growing is is, uh, incredible here, what Jesus is teaching. He, He said, which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle? Now, I want you to keep in mind he's still talking about faith. Faith is plowing something brand new. The servant there is is a type of faith. Faith is plowing a field. Faith is plowing something brand new in your life. You're going to have to plow in order to plant seed in order to reap a harvest. So faith is plowing something brand new in your life. And so God is calling you to plant whatever it is that he's dealing with in your heart. Plant that ministry. Plant that message. Plant that ideology. Plant that business. Plant that family. Plant it. Plant the seed. Plant the seed and watch and see the harvest come. Plant your creativity like the people that were presenting at Flow last night. Plant your creativity. We had one young lady that sang last night. She's 12 years old. She's about to turn 13. And as far as I know, it's the first time she has really sang by herself in a setting like that. And it was challenging for her. It was challenging, but she did a good job. She did okay. She did okay. But what she was doing was planting her creativity. She was planting a seed. And as she proceeds and continues to allow faith to plow her field, that seed of creativity is eventually going to reap a harvest. You may be planting a thought process. You're in a discussion with your spouse or with your children, with your parents, and you are planting a thought process. This is how I am thinking. This is what I am considering. You are allowing faith to plow in the field of your life. And then Jesus talked about feeding cattle. Feeding cattle as well. The meat of the word. The cattle are a type of the meat of the word. So faith is bringing the meat of the word into our lives. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the latest news report. Hearing uh, your favorite song. Hearing uh, what uh, what, what your mother said, what your father said. How does faith come? Comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. So the meat of the word is being built up in our lives as we hear the word of God. Then Jesus talks about uh, 
a, a, a meal setting. We're going to sit down at a table. We're going to cook a meal. We're going to eat. So I want you to understand that the conversation is still about faith, that faith is preparing a meal that has not been prepared before so that you will eat a meal that you have not eaten before. Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. So as you put your faith to work, your faith is not only plowing a field where there's the planting of the seed and the reaping of the harvest, but your faith is also cooking a meal, preparing a meal that has not been prepared before. Your faith is preparing something that you have not tasted of before, that you have not eaten of before. So I want to encourage you to put your faith to work and let your faith prepare something that is going to be good for you, beneficial for your life. As you do that, you're going to find that faith is on the increase. You must use the faith that you have. You must exercise the faith that you already have in your life. And you do have an element of faith. To each one is given the measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. You already have the measure of faith. So take that faith and put it into action. Put it to work. Don't just be sitting around asking God to increase your faith. No, he's given you the way to increase your faith. Right here in Luke chapter 17, we don't just sit around and wait for it to happen. No, we put our faith to work. We put our faith into action. We exercise our faith and we see how God is going to move in our lives. Hallelujah. That's the way it happens. Thanks for being on with me this morning. It is Monday morning. Thanks for starting your week with me. I appreciate it. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for inviting people to come on. Thank you so very much. Put your faith to work today. Put it to work. Get those opportunities moving in your life. See those open doors of opportunity in front of you. Open doors today. Use your faith to get divinely connected in those relationships that you need to have. Use your faith to activate divine resources in your life. Use your faith to know that you have favor with God and favor with man. Right now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness and disease. I rebuke allergies in this allergy season. I rebuke the symptoms of it and I command it to leave you now. By the authority of the name of Jesus, I declare you are free, you are at liberty, you are whole, you are healed, you're living by faith, you're exercising your faith, and your faith is on the increase. Your faith is increasing. God bless you so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon.